Okay, this build is an awesome Castlevania Fashion Souls bleed build with over 1,400 AR that melts bosses' health bars. We have the Iron Greatsword with Blood Affinity, we have a Dragon Communion Seal, we have the Seppuku Ash of War, we have the Swarm of Flies Incantation, we have Lord of Blood's Exaltation, we have a White Mask, and we have the awesome looking Hoslo's Armor Set. We also have optional loadouts for bosses immune to bleed, and did I mention we look like Alucard from Castlevania? Toasty! Oh yes, my fellow Tarnished, I give you the Blood Prince. Okay, let's start with a more in-depth look at the gear and setup so we can wreck anything and everything. If you could leave me a like and subscribe, that would be awesome, thanks. So, our weapon of choice is the Iron Greatsword plus 25 with the Blood Affinity and the Ash of War Seppuku, and in our offhand we have a Dragon Communion Seal plus 10. Thanks to Patch 109, Greatswords have increased speed, range, recovery time, and guard counter speed. You can get the Iron Greatsword to drop from the misbegotten enemies in Laindel Royal Capital on the path to the Grand Lift of Rold. The Black Wet Blade for the Blood Affinity is found in Nokron in the Night Sacred Grounds, and Seppuku you get here in the mountaintops of the Giants east of the Frozen Lake on an Invisible Scarab. We found in testing that the Iron Greatsword was giving us the highest AR for our stat spread, which we will look at in a moment. To really get our boosts going, we have the White Mask boosting attack when bleed is in effect. This is our optimum headpiece. We're wearing the Hoslo's armor set for our fashion souls. Again, you can optimize with more utility pieces if you want. The White Mask can be found in Morgwin's Palace in the Blood Lake area of the map. You'll get randomly invaded by nameless White Mask characters, which can drop the mask. Hoslo's armor set can be obtained by invading Juno Hoslo. This is the final step of the Volcano Manor questline. I should just mention we are actually using Albrich's braces to keep our medium roll speed and our fashion souls. These braces can be found in Laindel Royal Capital in the main hall of the Fortified Manor. In the Talisman slots we have some variation depending on the situation, but we start with Lord of Blood's Exaltation working with the White Mask to increase our attack power when bleed kicks in. This is dropped by Eskar, Priest of Blood in the Laindel Catacombs. The Dagger Talisman boosting our critical damage. This is found behind the Stone Sword Key Gate in Volcano Manor. Then we have two utilities for now, Urtree's Favor plus two boosting our health, stamina and equip load, and the Green Turtle Talisman boosting stamina recovery speed. The Urtree Favor plus two is found in the Ashen Capital after Malaketh. Take the lift from the Forbidden Lands to find a closed off area and find this talisman to the south on a corpse on a tree root. Just hug the wall to sneak round past the enemies. And the Green Turtle Talisman is found in the Summoner Water Village in an underground area behind a Stone Sword Fog Gate. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic we have the Faith Knot tier boosting our faith by 10, more on this when we look at our stats, and we have the Stone Barb Crack tier boosting our chance to break enemies for critical hits. The Faith Knot tier can be found east of the Church of Pilgrimage, just down a cliff surrounded by poisonous flower enemies, and the Stone Barb Crack tier is dropped by the Pewter Tree Avatar in Kaelid. As for our incantations, we have Golden Vow, which you can get in Mount Gelmer at the Corpse Den Shack, Flame Grant Me Strength, which you can get in Kaelid around the back of Fort Gale, and then Swarm of Flies, which you can get in Mogwin's Palace in a small cave in the Blood Lake. Right, let's have a look at the stats next. I started with the Hero class, and we have aimed to min-max Strength and Arcane with this build. We have Vigor at 57, Mind at 11. This gives us enough base FP to buff with Golden Vow, Seppuku, and Flame Grant Me Strength with one FP bar. Endurance is at 15, Strength at 54. Because we will be two-handing the Iron Greatsword, we get 50% bonus to Strength, which makes our total Strength, whilst two-handing, 81, not 54. Nice. Dexterity at 10, so we can wield the Iron Greatsword. Intelligence we don't touch. Faith is at 15. We use the Faith Knot tier to boost our Faith to 25, so we can buff with Golden Vow. And finally, we have Arcane at 60 for our Bleed buildup. Our Dragon Communion Seal is scaling with Arcane, and this is increasing the Bleed buildup from Swarm of Flies. So, with all this in place, we have a very decent rune level of 150. Now, let's talk combat. When it comes to our Blood Prince build, we start by using our Flask, then we buff with Golden Vow, Seppuku, and Flame Grant Me Strength. Then we can restore our FP and cast Swarm of Flies to go at our enemy whilst we two-hand the Greatsword and go in with our fast R1 swings. Using Seppuku immediately will activate Lord of Blood's Exaltation and the White Mask, so we start fights with boosted attack power. 
Then we have the bleed proccing fast and the chance to break our opponent's stance and go in for our boosted critical hits. I just can't believe how fast bleed can proc with this, sometimes in just one or two hits. If enemies are dying too fast and you aren't getting a chance for a critical hit, then you can always swap out the Dagger Talisman for the Viridian Amber Talisman plus two for even more stamina. Right, I know what you're thinking. What about enemies that are immune to bleed? Well, simply try Variation 2. Change your Blood Affinity to Heavy and put the Lion's Claw Ash of War on the Iron Greatsword. Put in the Shard of Alexander to boost Lion's Claw, then put in the Carrion Filigree Crest to lower skills FP cost, and you can keep the Dagger Talisman in to boost critical attacks. With this variation, you can spam Lion's Claw and its awesome Hyper Armor to break enemy stance. You can get the Shard of Alexander from Iron Fist Alexander when beating him at the end of his quest line in Crumbling Faramazula, and you can get the Carrion Filigree Crest from War Counselor Iggy after talking to Rani at Rani's Rise for the first time. Honestly, I just love this build. It looks awesome and feels really well balanced. You can trivialize bosses if needed or just enjoy a well balanced playthrough. Right, before we showcase some fights, I just want to give a big shout out to Fess, one of my Ash Knights, for the build and helping me test it. Now then, let's melt some bosses. So, there you have it guys, the Blood Prince. Let me know what you think in the comments, how would you tweak this build, and are there any builds you would like me to cover? All the best, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!